Hello, this is David from the Bookman in Orange, California, welcoming you to my segment today of things found in used books. And uh, let's get started right away. I got some interesting stuff today. I want to cover it all. And uh, we'll start off today with something that uh, in this Anita Luce book, it's a little little document that was sent apparently sent to postal customers uh in uh i believe it was 1968 because that's when the six cent stamp was uh in use and it says dear postal patron number one all christmas cards will require a six cents postage this year sealed or unsealed i'm not sure what unsealed means Number two, cards may be sealed and contain a written message. Okay. Use zip codes in both the address and your return address. The local and out of town labels speed the movement and dispatch of your mail. Number five, mail early in December and early in the day. Now, it's not that interesting to look at, and it's not that ground shattering of, a, of, a, of an item, but I thought, to me, it's interesting because it, it's a it's a little window on to the way we did stuff, you know, back back then, in the '60s when things uh, weren't quite as cut and dry, and 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 you would get something like this in the mail telling you how to send a post uh, a Christmas card, and uh, I found it interesting, and uh, I thought I'd share it with you, and that's that one. Next. In this little uh, uh, Rex Beach book, Rainbow's End, uh, I found this advertisement for for uh, fruit ranching in British Columbia. It's actually a book that they're advertising. And this is the advertisement for the second edition of this book. So it's already been in, it's already gone through the first, and we're ready to get into the second edition of Fruit Ranching in British Columbia for $1.50. And uh, I'm not sure exactly when this came out, but uh, it's it's got, the, it's, it's probably from the turn of the century, the 20s, 1919s. Uh, anyway, so make sure to get your copy now i'm sure it's in a much larger edition today so that's i i like that fruit ranching in british columbia it's pretty specific now this manual here is it's uh the marine's handbook and this one this marine's handbook was published in 1940 and it's full of uh, fascinating stuff about how to handle a gun how to uh fix wounds, uh, what happens if someone goes into shock, uh, all kinds of uh, military type stuff, uh, including how to work up a submachine gun and rifles. Um, but within this book, I found a number of things. Uh, I found three different articles or newspaper clippings on wounded soldiers. Now, none of them passed away at this point but they were all wounded. Uh, one was wounded in Germany in 1945. Uh, the other guy was wounded in Tarawa. And this gentleman here, it says that the High, uh, High Point Marine nearly lost his smile on Iwo Jima. Uh, and the article goes on to say how he was a happy-go-lucky guy before he went to the war, but he's not so um, easy to smile nowadays. And uh, so they're kind of, kind of again, a, a little window onto the of, of, of the way things were during the World War II era uh, with our newspapers and uh, articles on, on the folks. It's, uh, it's kind of sobering. Within the same book, I found this daily flight incident form. Uh, now you fill this out before you go on your take your plane out and it tells you what kind of plane, the model V-54B4-250. 
And uh, the place was the NATTC, which is, uh, the, uh, I think, an air station in Pensacola, Florida. And it's dated June 1st, 1943. And so it has a whole list of things uh, on it for you to, to write a, a comment on or, or check off or whatever. And uh, number one, it's inspect blades for pits, cracks, nicks, and proper oil film. And someone has written no oil. Okay, uh, check spark plug terminal assemblies for cleanliness and tightness, and it says 30. Um, inspect tires for defects and proper inflation, and it says cracks. So this plane didn't sound like it was going to go up right away. <laughs> it didn't sound very good at all, actually. I don't think I would want to fly it. So they had some work to do on this, on this particular plane, and it goes on. There's a whole checklist here. Um, and uh, I found that very interesting. Again, 1943, June 1st. So, and finally, I found this rather fascinating item in this uh, book called The Movies. And it's a, it's a big tome, uh, relatively common book. Usually uh, I get it in dust jacket, but this time I had no dust jacket. It's, it's a little worse for wear, cracked hinges and stuff. And I was kind of like thumbing through it. And I found a couple things that I thought was relatively interesting, like very interesting. Um, one is this giant postcard. And what it is, it's the uh, world famous forecourt of the Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood, California. So this postcard, I believe, was from 1966. And in it, you can see some of the stars, you know, uh, Donna Michi, Norma Shear, Eddie Cantor, Henry Fonda. Anyway, so it, it has a lot of the stars there. And, and I, I guess that's still there. I, I, you know, I live out here and I've never been to the Grauman's Chinese Theater, so I don't know. But uh, I found that interesting. And most interesting of all uh, was this, this envelope. It's stuck in there. It says uh, Clark and High, H Y, High, Clark and High. Uh, and I pulled it out. And the picture of Clark Gable and High. Now, I don't know who High is. Uh, I looked it up. I did a little research. I couldn't find anything on High. On the back, it says Clark Gable and High at Chasen's in Beverly Hills, November 1954. And down at the bottom, it says, To my dearest Peggy, with love always from High. So High gave this picture to Peggy of her and Clark Gable at Chasen's, 1954. Now that is cool. That's a cool little item. And you can tell it's kind of a, again, I stress these aren't professional photographs. You can tell, but just the, the, the lighting and the, and, the, and the posing and stuff, it's just, just a snapshot someone took of Clark and High. And I want to thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. And uh, I hope you tune in next week. Well, we'll do it all over again. I've got, already got some great stuff for next week. Um, and if you have something that you would like to share with the program, uh, please uh, just send me a picture and a little blurb about what you found to oldbook at ebookman.com. That's oldbook, no S, oldbook at ebookman.com. And uh, I'd be more than happy to, to bring it along and share it with the uh, rest of the audience. And, in the meantime, I want to thank you for stopping by, and I will see you next week.